We've implemented boxes in Curly, and we can use boxes for state, for example, creating a, a box that contains one, setting that box to, came, to contain two, and that way when we get to the unbox x here, we'll get a two instead of one. But we started out when we were looking at plate, looking at a different kind of state, which is via variables. Instead of creating a box, um, binding x to a box that holds one, we can have in plate, we could create an x uh, that is mutable so that x itself can be changed and if we just use x then we'll get the updated uh, value of x. We'll get the 2 out instead of the 1 here. So that's what we're going to look at now, adding variables as opposed to just boxes to our curly language in the same way that plate has mutable variables. I'd like to look at a slightly larger example. Uh, let's look at this one where we let x be 5. We have a function that uses x directly um, and adds it to a given number y. Before we call f on 1, if we did that right now, we would get a 6 out, but before we call f, we set x to be 6, and that way f ends up adding 6 plus 1 instead of uh, 5 plus 1, and we get 7 out as the end. So this program that uses uh, a variable x and mutates the variable x, it's analogous to a program that uses boxes. Uh, we could let x be box of 5, and then do unbox of x, and set box of x before we call the function. And the results of these two cases would be the same. There's a correspondence between using boxes for state and using variables for state. In fact, we could mechanically translate this kind of example down to this kind of example. Uh, the mechanical translation is going to involve, uh, for a variable like x, putting its value in a box, and then every time we use x, using an unbox to look up the value, and every time we set x, set x uh, using setbox instead to set the box that x contains. But if we mechanically do this translation, it's not just x that would change. Um, uh, an automated process would also box the value of f because um, it, it might be uh, changed later. And so if we box f, uh, that means that when we call f, we need to unbox it as well. And finally, we have one more variable in this program, the y's here, where we have a reference to y. We need to unbox y. Um, it, we also need to create the box where y get its, gets its value. And the place where y gets its value, since y is an argument to the function, is in the function call. So we have to change all function calls so that they pass the arguments to the function in a box instead of um, passing the value directly. And that corresponds to the same kind of box that we put here and here for let bindings. So if we do this mechanical transformation, we could take programs that look like this and just change it to programs that do like that look like this. We could do that in the parser, or we could have a compiler step. But the, the other approach that we're going to take is if all variables in the environment are going to be mapped to boxes, then we might as well just skip the box v um, and have a binding in our environment map a name to a location. So this is the same notion of location as where we allocated boxes. We just don't create an explicit box v. We have an implicit box v by recording the location. And that way we don't have to add boxes to our language at all. We'll just have variables and we'll have bindings from names to locations in the environment.